everybody. I was in two minds about uh, sharing this video, but I was inspired recently by Roberto Blake uh, with a video called It's OK Not To Be OK. If you get a chance, I'll put a link here. Go and check out that video. Depression um, affects all of us at one point or another in our life and you can never know when it's coming. This is focused on the experience I had with my son Panos. Today I'm attending Soul Church where my son worships and they're featuring a film they put together. I, I don't know how I'm going to react to that. I, I should think I'll be very emotional. It's like any other ordinary day, but inside. Cold LC, is it? This isn't for me. Sitting off dying at first. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, great to see you again, John. Looking forward to the. Uh, the oh, thanks, my son. I've got all my stuff in there. Here we are, Sunday morning, heading up to Norwich to Soul Church for the heart of our service meeting up with family and having a day out. I don't think I, I don't think I ever would would have taken my own life, but I think I used to get so high to the point where I would just lay down completely gone and then not, not really care whether I was to wake up or not. I mean, I used to deal drugs and stuff, but it wasn't like I was doing it for money. Every single bit of profit that I made was going straight back you know, into, my, into my bloodstream. I would just be in a room, like sometimes you know, three or four of us, sometimes you know, five or six, sometimes more. On the table would literally just be like drugs, tobacco, you know, alcohol, and we'd just sit around the room, keep going until we'd run out of whatever's there. Whether it took the day, or two days, or three days, we'd just keep going until it was, until it was gone. He'd be awake all night, and then he'd sleep all day, and then wait for that moment for him to wake up, and just to see your child cry, that he didn't want to be here. That was the worst part, that he didn't want to be alive anymore. Hi love, made it. Hi son, how are you? Hello, are you good? Yeah, good to see you man. Good. An important factor here is the uh, guys that make the coffee. Thanks guys. Cool. <laughs> if this video can help just one person it's done its job. The underlining message for anybody that's going through uncertainty is one of hope. My son and my family went through such trauma and it spanned over a period of years from when he was at school. Any parent would say it doesn't happen or it wouldn't happen to my son or child, they're far too strong. Always be aware because I didn't see it. A cry of help sometimes can be a silent one. Thank God every single day that my son has found his way. There are no 
significant signs that somebody's going through depression. People are very good at hiding. There were times when I had to scrape my child off the floor. I mean, I was feeling depressed, alone, empty, like a hollow shell. I was aggressive, and yeah, just, just mainly just driven by a lot of self-hate. And so, like, obviously, like, what, what, whatever you're sort of feeling on the inside will always come out, it'll bubble to the surface. When it actually hit me was when people around me were getting sick. They were going in and out of health and hospital. My best friend at the time, who's, who I was very close to, um, he had um, he'd hung himself, and that was it for me. That was it. I was like, something, something now is going to change. I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I was looking for, like, the answer to everything. Pretty, like, pretty much, it's like, what's on the other side? Like, this can't just be it. Like. Yeah, so I remember first um, going to Soul Church. I wasn't very excited to go. We sat right at the back, and there was me, him, and his sister. Elsie turned around and said, Mum, he wanted to go home. That was 10 minutes into the service. I used to go and visit um, a guy called Ben. In 2016, he said, oh, do you want to come to Hillsong Conference? And I was like, no, I can't. I've got to work, you know, and things like that. I, w I went to this old church service yeah, after Saturday night when he'd asked me to. I can't even remember like what was what happened in that service, but something really happened to me and I was like, I rang Ben, like, have you still got that ticket? I'm gonna, I wanna come with you. In the car, I think it was on the way back from the conference, I said like a little prayer, like just whatever happens, I'm always gonna believe in God, no matter what happens. And I think ever since then, that was it. My life just radically changed. There were so many times where I thought, how was God going to use someone like me after everything that I'd done, after all the wrong choices that I'd made? I was like, at home like reading my Bible, and that's when I really knew that I had a calling on my life. God had something planned for me this whole time, and I was avoiding it for so long. My, my life now is like completely different how it was before. I've reconciled my relationship with my parents. I'm married, happily married. Yeah, I've, I believe God is using me to build a home. Um, I believe that God's using me now, like through my, my musical past, He's using me now in worship. I get to work one day a week on community lunch. I've always considered Soul Church my home from as soon as the moment I walked in and saw Welcome Home on the, on the welcome mat. Brick by brick, God was rebuilding my life. It was like, wow, like, no matter what I've done or you know, who, I, who I was, it's not going to determine where I'm going to go and who I can become. He just looks alive now, doesn't he? He's just alive. He's like, thank you, God, I've got my little boy back again. I believe wholeheartedly that every person matters and every person has a story. And if you think about a home, it's made up of hundreds, if not thousands of bricks, but each one of those bricks plays an integral part of the home. And I think for Soul Church, like every other church, it's so important that we keep the focus on the one, keep the focus on the stories and the, you know, the miracles that are coming out and through our church. You see, Heart for the House is actually a, a really sacred and a holy moment in the life of our church. And people really do bring something of sacrifice to God. And I truly believe that it captures heaven's attention. Son, that was the most moving thing. I wept. That was good, wasn't it? I wept unashamedly when I saw that. I'm hey. so, I am so proud of you, mate. Hey, bless you, mate. I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> oh, how is he? Oh, he's asleep.